Welcome back to the Space Gulag, otherwise known as PPSW, your favorite hangout place, and today we're going to take a look at what would have happened had Darth Vader stayed alive at the end of Return of the Jedi. With so much happening at the end of Return of the Jedi, could the now Anakin Skywalker be able to live with his crimes against the galaxy and help his children, or would he continue to struggle as Anakin did before he was manipulated by evil? Before we begin this video, let's smash that like button, let's try and shoot for 2,000 likes in the first 24 hours, and I will release What If Galen Merrick Was Trained by Mace Windu. This is a video you won't want to miss. We're also going for 50,000 subscribers, so join the Space Cool if you want to be a part of our incredible journey together. If you have ideas for videos, leave them down below. I do write up in comments, but I don't do crossovers. And one last thing, if you want to support the channel, check out the Patreon, Twitch, and Queen of Discord. Special shout out to Benjamin Wells for being your grand tier supporter, and Jay Hoffman and Warpigman308 as a master of the tier supporter on our Patreon. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. You are funding massive projects in the future for this month, bigger than yesterday's video. And if you want to learn how to win a free lightsaber for the next giveaway, watch the end of the video and I will tell you how. Our story begins inside of the second Death Star. Luke is carrying his father, Darth Vader, as the inside of the space station begins to crumble. Luke was much smaller than his hulking father. Vader was heavy. Luke was using all of his strength after being struck with the full power of the dark side from the fingers of the Emperor. Many of the Imperial men running by didn't look at the two a second time. Most of them didn't care for Vader, and those who did were too concerned with getting themselves off the space station. Luke carried his father to an Imperial shuttle, as Vader crumbled down onto the ramp into it. He was weak and fragile after taking such a powerful blast of lightning from his former master. Luke was trying to save his father. He had truly saved his father from the poison of the dark side of the force. He was happy he could turn Vader back into Anakin Skywalker. Luke dropped his father as he looked down on him. Vader was weak, but instead of giving up, he knew he could be more helpful to his son. He knew that if he let go, he wouldn't be able to guide his son. Vader was obsessed with finding Luke ever since he found out the name of the pilot that destroyed the Death Star. How could Vader just let go now? He was saved by his son, and, well, he saved his son as well. Vader looked up from the ground and looked into the eyes of three Force Ghosts, Qui-Gon Jinn, Obi-Wan, and Yoda. They were there to support him. While Obi-Wan came back to show Anakin how to become a Force Ghost, he realized that there were more important things in Anakin's journey for him to follow. Luke pleaded with his father to get inside of the ship. Vader looked at his son. Under his mask, he smiled. Luke truly loved him. It had been so long since he was really ever loved. When he became Vader, he forfeited all of the love that he had around him. Vader, from below the mask, felt a tear course down his wicked face as he looked at his son who was using all of his strength to try and pick up the metallic Vader off the ramp and get him inside of the ship before the Death Star exploded. Vader used his last strength as he hauled himself off the ground to get himself inside of the ship. Vader collapsed as Luke tried to check on him. Luke could feel that Anakin was alright, so he ran to the cockpit and escaped, making great time as the Death Star slowly exploded behind them. Vader lay on the floor. A million thoughts ran through his mind. He thought about everything that had just happened. He was rejoicing in the moment. For the first time in his life, he didn't have the threat of the Jedi or the Sith. He wasn't forced to living up to a prophecy he was, in the moment, truly living. His life without being controlled by another. Anakin Skywalker, for the first time in 45 years of life, was finally free. No longer a slave to anyone. He sat on the floor, looking up at the ceiling, feeling his weak breath wash over him. All the years of pain and suffering that not only he endured, but the galaxy endured because of his actions fell over. But something consumed Vader. It was the fear of what would come next. Would he be executed by the Rebellion? Or would he be spared after all of what he had done in the last 20 years of his life? Anakin thought about seeing Yoda, Obi-Wan, and Qui-Gon. It was bizarre how any of them could be there after they all died. He didn't know if Sidious was telling the truth about feeling Yoda's death through the Force, but it seemed as if he had. Anakin was idle on the floor, focusing on the Force surrounding him. Everything felt so different than the last time he felt this way. The light side of the Force crawled over his body. He felt inner peace of the moment, as he felt the Force surround every breath. It was peaceful. How could he not enjoy this? It was incredible, maybe because he was no longer a slave to the Jedi or the Sith, but Anakin Skywalker himself, and while he was a part of the suit that was Darth Vader, maybe, just maybe, he could try and heal. At this point, Vader had some uncontrollable emotions. 
he faced his true self. Just like Luke said, the man he had only forgotten. Anakin Skywalker was under the depressive husk that was Darth Vader. It was incredibly difficult shoving all of his emotions down, when he filled himself with the crippling anger and pain. Anakin didn't give himself a break, and only stopped himself from succeeding. He put himself down and made himself suffer for all of his inability to save his wife. While the suit of Vader was stuffy and he wanted to be free of it, Anakin sat alone inside of his helmet. His vision was blurry. He felt the force flow through his skin, passing through every vein and muscle inside. Anakin was a man while still inside the suit, but still a man. It was unimaginable to him. How could he have come so far in such a short amount of time? Was it Luke and his determination to help his father? Or was it finally being freed of slavery? All Anakin knew is that once he surpassed that vile depressive curse that suffocated him and took him away from the real Anakin, he was able to find peace in his life, in his real self for the first time ever. There were glimpses of it when he was in his meditation chamber or the countless hours he spent looking into space on the bridges of Star Destroyers, but a voice flew through his mind. It was him as a child telling Qui-Gon that he wanted to be the first person to see all the stars in the galaxy. The hope of a little boy crushed by the dogmatic code of the Jedi and the enslavement of the Sith. Vader's head felt limp as memories of the past 45 years of his life flew by. It was like his life was flashing before his eyes, as if he were about to die. But there were memories flashing before his eyes, and then a feeling caught a hold of a memory and that was the ignition of hope within himself. Whether he wanted to acknowledge it or not, when he was Darth Vader, he had a moment, when his small chance at redemption was sealed by the hope of finding the son named Luke Skywalker. Part of this fiery speck of hope was that Luke was the name Padme and him had settled on for having a boy, while they had settled on a name for the girl being Leia. Anakin then thought back to her. The teardrops inside of his eyes and on the inside of his helmet showed the images of lovers dancing as silhouettes by the fireplace. It was a memory of Anakin and Padme living the life they deserved to live rather than hiding it in secrecy. Anakin thought about Palpatine and made the skin he had left crawl. But as he moved on in his mind from Palpatine, he thought about the twin sister, the one he felt inside of Luke's mind inside of the Death Star. It gave Anakin more reason to live. He wanted to prove something to his children that he was ten times a man, rather the machine that was the evil Sith Lord, Darth Vader. He wanted to prove that he was better than that and that there was nothing that could change from evil into the man he knew he could be. Vader felt the landing gear drop and the ship locked down. That journey was incredibly quick, but then he saw Luke enter the bay where Anakin was laying hanging on with each shallow breath. Luke looked at his father and kneeled down. He, he told him that he was going to get him some help, the help that he needed to come back. The Nebulon B frigate that Luke docked with could provide the proper support to heal Anakin, though there was an issue. The rebels knew Vader and they would be ready to kill him on sight. Anakin on the other side of the door was a bit fearful of having to face the people who he'd slaughtered for decades. He used to be a hero. He used to free the people of the galaxy and then he enslaved the galaxy. He was a part of one of the galaxy's most evil regimes. The Empire was a threat to everyone, every living being. It wasn't until now that Anakin realized that he had to live with all of his mistakes, all of his crimes, to not just the people, but the Jedi too. It didn't matter. He helped Luke, who pulled him up. Luke told his father to trust him. The rebels wouldn't be thrilled to see him, but Luke had a plan to get them to help Anakin. While the rebels knew Vader by reputation, Luke was one of the rebellion's largest heroes. He blew up the first Death Star and he served as a hero on countless missions with General Solo and General Organa. Luke was a great help wherever and whenever he was needed. It was unlikely that the rebels would see him as a traitor, but this was Darth Vader after all. They looked at the doors and then they slammed open. It was the first time Anakin had ever seen the inside of one of these frigates. He destroyed plenty safe from the inside of a Star Destroyer. Nebulon B frigates never stood a chance against the might of the Imperial One class Star Destroyers. For Anakin, it was a little hard to remember those memories. Standing so lifeless as he watched thousands of people die as Star Destroyer turbo lasers ripped the ships into pieces. 
There was no one at the door lock when the doors opened. Luke again, using all of his strength, hauled the massive suit that was Darth Vader into the ship. And then, he stopped. Two passing rebels looked at him, and then they raised their weapons. Luke tried to show that it was him. Vader was a massive weight, and even Luke, as powerful with the force that he was, was struggling to keep himself balanced with Vader over his shoulder. Luke then spoke up, explaining that in as simple detail as he could, that Vader killed the Emperor and saved his life. Vader wasn't evil, and his name was Anakin. It was a hard sell, but since so many rebels looked up to Luke and wanted to be like him, aspiring to save others and help save the universe, they looked at Luke and they laid their blasters on the floor as they ran over to help Vader. They helped Luke bring Vader into the medical bay, which wasn't very far away. For many of the rebels inside of the ship, they were completely caught off guard when they saw Vader whisked away by two rebels and Luke Skywalker. Their first assumption was that these rebels were rebels to the rebellion. So. The entourage began to follow Vader and the other three to the medical bay. The three men got Vader to the medical bay where three or four medical droids began to operate on him. He was on the verge of death and they needed to get him inside of the Bacta tank with a functioning respirator. The rebels then turned around to see a large group of people that had been following them. Luke then stepped out in front as he stretched his back, looking at them and then explaining a little bit of what happened, a little bit more in depth too. He explained that Vader was Anakin Skywalker, his father, and his crimes against the people of the galaxy were punishable, but he saved him. Vader turned from the dark side to the light, trusting the ways of the Jedi. Luke explicitly saying specific words to ensure the rebels understood what he meant by Vader's turn from the darkness. Vader then, with all of his might, picked up the Emperor, throwing him down into the reactor shaft of the Death Star. Though there was more, and Luke capitalized off of his quick wit something he learned from Han Solo. He told them off the top of his head that Vader would have information regarding the Empire and their staging grounds. Being the former right-hand man to the Emperor meant that he would have access to information most people within the Empire wouldn't. The rebels all kind of nodded their heads and they trusted Luke. Why wouldn't they trust him? He was pivotal in the destruction of two Death Stars built by the Empire. Luke then told the rebels that it was time to celebrate victory. While the Empire loomed largely over the galaxy, the Rebels now made it clear that no force in that galaxy could stop them. Luke looked back at his father before leaving the room. He was alright, and he would be too. The medical droids were working on him, with precision, ensuring to not just save his life, but to do it in the least pain possible. Unlike after his loss on Mustafar, Anakin lay asleep knocked out with a drug to ensure that he wouldn't face the pain of this operation. His breathing stabbed out, not like being on an operating table would help his already uneven breathing patterns. Knocking Anakin out would help reduce his anxiety, and allow the droids to help him as much as he really required. It wouldn't be long until he was placed inside of the Bacta tank, though Anakin with the drugs keeping him unconscious was in a completely different world, one so mystical. He looked around and then down. He was wearing a black robe. He had his hands, again, with human flesh. He looked out and saw canyons afar, and trees and life. It was so peaceful here. He then heard two voices and he turned around looking at two young adults. He recognized Luke and then he saw that Leia was the twin sister. He then raised his hands to his face and he felt skin. It was incredible. Anakin's face was revealed. He saw some water and walked over to peer into his own reflection. He smiled, and saw his lips, teeth, his eyes, the color of the sky that lay behind him, and then he saw hair. He raised his hands and felt curls crawling down his head, and then almost as if it couldn't be more perfectly timed, the wind blew through his hair and softly hugged his face. Anakin was in a surreal place. Even more, the force was extraordinarily powerful here. Anakin feels the living force, and he breathes it all in. He couldn't believe it. How could he have not noticed? He was breathing with his own nose and mouth without a respirator. Anakin was in heaven when he felt the presence, and then all of a sudden his eyes opened inside of a Bacta tank. Vader hadn't been inside of one of these for years. He had been torturing himself, and because of that torture, he was unable to heal his body anymore. He became pasty and disgusting as he locked himself away under that suit of armor, refraining his body from any light of any source. Vader was destroying himself, though now he was on the inside of a Bacta tank for however long he was in there. 
He felt a lot more powerful force surrounding him. He didn't know where it was coming from. It was more powerful than he was at this state. He could feel it surrounding him though, and while he didn't know what or who it was, he did know that some of that presence was his son, Luke. Anakin's eyes searched the empty room, when three people and a Wookiee walked in. He recognized all of them, Luke, Leia, Han Solo, and Chewbacca. They were the most wanted people in the galaxy for their crimes against the Empire, and their continuous outspoken nature towards the Empire itself. They were unable to be kept happy, and they continuously made it clear to the galaxy that they wouldn't stop until the Empire did. Luke and Leia walked up to the glass where Luke took Leia's hand and guided it towards the glass, telling her to close her eyes. She smiled. She could feel the force essence of her father. Vader reached up both of the stubs on his arms as he reached out with the force, feeling their essences as well. For Leia, it was incredible. Just like Obi-Wan said so long ago that it was like turning a light on in a dark room. She felt the light of Anakin Skywalker. For the first time in both of their lives, Luke and Leia could feel how good of a man that Anakin Skywalker was. The heart inside Anakin was pure, full of light, full of love, something that even he didn't know he had. Luke and Leia for the first time in their entire lives established a bond with their father. Well, one of their parents at the very least. The glimpses they had of their mother was nothing compared to the real force that was their father floating before them. It was remarkable. He was remarkable. For Anakin, the feeling was likewise. His children were just like Padme. They both had traits that were exactly like that of their mother and their father. Anakin smiled. For the first time in forever, he truly smiled. Inside of a back to tank, and under the respirator, he smiled, with happiness in his heart. Leia was as bold as her mother was, and Anakin knew that from the first time they met. Leia didn't fear anyone or anything, and she let everyone who faced her down know that. Even after her homeworld was blown up by the Death Star, she showed her resilience and her inability to be stopped from helping others. Padme would have been so proud of her. She was also very powerful within the Force, just like her father. Leia was something else, and she was truly the child of Padme and Anakin. As for Luke, well, he had the unyielding determination of his mother. In all honesty, they both did. Luke and Leia always rebelled against their adopted parents. I guess Anakin was the same way when it came to the Jedi Order, after all. Luke was cunning, brave, and heroic, though oddly enough, for being separated their entire lives and only meeting each other for the first time on the first Death Star, both siblings were incredibly similar to one another. They were the same person, just in different bodies and on different planets. This bonding moment was so complete, full of peace and heart and love. Luke and Leia finally had a real parent, and Anakin finally had the real love that he hadn't had since before these children were born. Anakin sat there, and then something caught his attention. It was Solo's lust or love for Leia, he couldn't tell. The smuggler was a bit of a wise guy, but there was something good about him too. Maybe he never liked to admit it when he tried to be a tough, cool guy, but he was always the good guy. The Wookiee, on the other hand, looked as if he wanted to rip the limbs that Anakin had left off of his body. Anakin shuddered, and then he looked back at his children, who both with wide eyes and wide smiles, looked at their father. Leia told her father that he needed to get rest. There was a lot that would come in the future for him, but for now, he needed to regain his strength. Anakin spent weeks inside of the Bacta tank, and while it wasn't normally suggested for people to stay inside of a Bacta tank for so long, this extended period inside of the Bacta tank helped Anakin heal all over his body. His hair became visible with thin lines of brown and hints of gray on his head. Anakin was going through an extreme healing, while at the same time, he would enhance his presence in the light side of the Force by meditating. While many people saw it as weird that Darth Vader was casually sitting inside of a Bacta tank inside of a Rebellion frigate, most of them got over it, especially because the Rebellion offensive became even more victorious against the Empire, especially with the aid of Anakin. The Rebels were able to secure victories all across Imperial worlds. One more important detail was the little information Vader knew about Palpatine's contingency plans. He made the Rebels aware that he had them, though he didn't know all of them or what they were. He never really thought about it. In his self-destructive ways, he never really got around to even thinking about killing the Emperor, or what may come after he did such a thing. 
while Anakin would spend some of his days informing the rebels about Imperial contingency plans, and even more so Imperial secret bases and scientific labs full of egregious studies, like the Dark Trooper program, Anakin, when he wasn't righting the wrongs of his past by giving aid to the Rebellion, was meditating, just like his son. It was fair to say that Luke and Anakin were at this point very similar. They both focused heavily on the Force and what it could do for them. Anakin was teaching himself the ways of balance, and while there was a lot of light he had to reintroduce himself into, it was like muscle memory. Once he started letting the light into his life, he became a vessel of it, while at the same time the darkness inside of him became an ally rather than a torture device. Anakin's thoughts dwelled on his future, and there was something more. He heard a familiar voice, it was Yoda, telling him to travel into a very specific nebula. Inside of that nebula, the Force could guide him in the right direction. Sure, Anakin didn't understand now, but Yoda told Anakin to trust his astromech to get him there. Anakin didn't really know what this all meant, but his thoughts dwelled on him. Every so often, Anakin would have the entire family with him. He had a lovely view of space from a large window outside of the room that he was in. When the rest of the group was here, Luke was showing his sister how to use the Force. Anakin was very proud of his children for their eagerness to learn the power of the Force. Leia would realize her true power within the Force. Han and Chewie would watch. They didn't really understand it, but Han was extremely supportive of the woman that he loved. Luke and Leia would spend hours in front of Anakin. He wouldn't say anything out of respect for his son, always letting Luke teach what he knew and ask when he needed guidance. Though there was something Anakin wasn't particularly fond of when it came to Luke's understanding and expression of the Force, it was too reliant on the lack of attachments. Anakin could also feel how nervous the lack of attachment talk made Han Solo, and while Anakin didn't fully warm up to Han yet, he thought Luke needed to understand that the lack of attachment is what caused the downfall of the Jedi Order. Of course Anakin himself played a part in that, but the Jedi Code forbade the Jedi from having attachments. Those same attachments that allowed them to be the personal to anyone they were serving or protecting. One day, when Luke finished training his sister, Anakin asked if he could talk to him alone. While it was hard for Anakin to speak underwater and with a respirator on, he was able to convey to Luke what it was that he wanted to say. Luke listened as Anakin spoke with grace and truth, telling Luke about the failures of the Jedi from the past and how that cost them their order. He then told Luke that if the Jedi were to continue, their code needed to be changed and accommodate the light and the dark. When Luke asked why, Anakin explained, by asking if Luke remembered the duel on the Death Star. Luke nodded, and then Anakin continued expressing that the power that Luke had with the darkness was extraordinary. No, Luke again nodded. Anakin continued saying that a Jedi should be able to balance themselves within the Force. Using light and the dark shouldn't mean a change of morality, but a change in the Force and how one masterfully uses it. While Anakin had his distaste for Mace Windu, he was the perfect example, and so Anakin continued telling Luke of a great duelist. Mace Windu, the master of the Order, was one of the Order's best duelists. Using the dark side propelled his power and allowed him to achieve something that he couldn't have otherwise. Then Anakin continued saying that when Mace went into the darkness, he didn't falter from being a Jedi. He was still a Jedi, but without that darkness, he wouldn't have been so powerful in the heat of battle. Luke was beginning to understand when Anakin then talked about another Jedi, a Jedi from the past. This Jedi was named Exar Kun. He was much like other Jedi, but he wanted to have more power. He wanted to grow in his strength and excel within the Force. Anakin told Luke that if the Jedi allowed him to explore the dark side, he would have had no reason to leave the Jedi Temple and he wouldn't have become compelled to become a vessel of evil. The story rounded itself around to him, and how he was manipulated by the Sith because of their promise of new abilities and powers that could save the people he cared about. The Jedi had a path, but Anakin didn't know it at the time, and while this was obviously emotional for Anakin to talk about, he made it abundantly clear to Luke that had the Jedi been open and allowed him to be emotionally open, he wouldn't have turned to the dark side out of desperation. Luke looked at his father and then asked how they could achieve this balance within the Force. Anakin had a couple ideas, but they would have to wait until he could leave the Bacteting. Luke would spend the duration of the next couple weeks waiting for his father. When he was informed by Mon Mothma, the leader of the Rebellion, that Anakin wasn't allowed to be welcomed on any civilized planet. 
He was allowed to be with another Jedi on mercy missions, but not to be out of sight of another Jedi Guardian. Because of his vile past, it was a surprise that there wasn't a hit put out on him. But because the time he spent in the Bacta tank changed so much, no one would be able to really recognize that he was Vader. Mon Mothma believed that maybe Anakin could become a hero again, but for now, he was a stay away from the people of the galaxy. Luke understood, and he walked to Vader's medical bay room, where Leia was talking to him. She was kneeled down before his back to tank. Anakin was inside. He was sleeping. He wasn't cognitive or anything. He was just peacefully resting. Leia was kneeling with her hand on the tank, and her eyes closed. She was talking about something regarding Padme. Of course, Luke knew that that was their mother, but he came in and sat down in the corner of the room and listened. Luke used the force and then reached out with his hand to see what it was that was going inside of Anakin's mind. It was him and Padme. They were running around, laughing, dancing like they did in the old days. Anakin was so happy. His smile was wider than the outer rim, and Padme's heart could be seen beating out of her chest. Anakin and Padme were made for each other, and Luke and Leia got to see their parents really in love for the first time. Though, Leia had seen it before. When Anakin was sleeping, she would come in and manipulate his dreams. It was something new she discovered she could do, and she took full advantage of it to make her father happy. She just wanted to give joy to the man who lost everything. By doing this, Leia learned a lot about her father and the life he lived before he became Vader. Sometimes she'd place him with Rex, or Ahsoka, or even Obi-Wan. One other thing, Rex had visited Anakin and finally saw his former Jedi General for the first time since the Order fell. While Rex could have known what happened to Anakin, most assumed he did. While Rex would never say himself, seeing his old general was a joy to his old heart. At which point, Rex was reaching an age where most of the Generation 1 clones began to die off. Rex was one of the few of the dying breed of clones. The true travesty of those who survived the war was that they themselves had to watch themselves quickly corrode and die off. Anakin enjoyed seeing Rex, but honestly, as much as he enjoyed seeing Luke, Leia, and Rex, he most enjoyed dreaming of his past. It was something that was especially hard for him to let go of as Vader, especially in the early months of becoming the evil Sith Lord. Now, it was even harder because he had Luke and Leia, and he couldn't get rid of 20 years of pain and suffering that was left behind him. The one regret Anakin had was that he never pulled himself out earlier. In the earlier months of becoming Vader, he toiled with it, Nightmares of Padme's death, nightmares of Kenobi, nightmares of killing younglings in the council chambers. He regretted everything. He destroyed the fabric of peace and replaced it with terror. Luke came to his father and expressed that he had news from the leader of the rebellion. Anakin knew. He didn't have to hear it. He understood and he had full intentions of reconciling himself with the galaxy and its people. But first he had to find out why Yoda was leading him to a nebula. But regardless of anything else, it was time for Anakin to come out of the Bacta tank. The medical droids had prepared Anakin with two hands. Much like Luke's replaced hand, they both looked human, and they both felt human. Unless it punched you. Anakin was relieved to be out of the Bacta tank, but something even more relieving was the fact that he didn't need his respirator anymore. He could breathe like a real man. He hadn't ever spent so much time instead of a Bacta tank before. He never understood how much Bacta could really benefit someone and now he knew. Luke sat down next to his father and helped him attach his arms, and then put a nice flowing robe around him. Anakin smiled as he looked at his son, and then opened his arms as if he were asking for a hug. He was asking for a hug, and Luke gave it to him. He wrapped his arms around his son, and his son had his arms around him. Leia walked in at the same time as this happened, and watched as Anakin with his eyes closed had a tear rolled on his cheek. Leia walked over and put her arms around her father and her brother. The Force hadn't ever felt so connected. Anakin's heart pulled at him. All he could do was think about how much his wife would have loved to have shared this moment with him. But now, here, he was with the people he loved most in this world. Luke, with his head resting over his father's shoulder, felt the same way, wishing that only his mom could be here to see her husband and his father recovering from the troubled road he was once on. For Anakin, it was like waking up from a nightmare. The change from darkness to the light felt real for the first time. He really felt the change in everything, in the Force and especially within himself. Han, who was in the entrance with Chewie, smiled. He didn't need to have the Force to know how special this was for his friend Luke and his girlfriend Leia. 
and while he himself was a bit nervous to be hugging Anakin, he was comfortable standing in the doorway, with his arm against the hinges and his legs crossed. Luke told his father that he loved him before he let go, and looked into Anakin's eyes, his real eyes. Anakin could never believe he almost threw away this perfect moment months ago on the Death Star. He was so close to giving up and Qui-Gon, Obi-Wan, and Yoda convinced him to stay just by being there. Maybe Obi-Wan was a good mentor and Qui-Gon and Yoda had the best of interests of Anakin in their minds. Anakin smiled and then looked down. Luke and Leia looked at that glimmering smile of Anakin Skywalker, the same one that they'd seen in his dreams when he was with Padme. They truly understood how much this meant to him. They were his hope, his light, his joy, and his love. Luke, with his hand on his father's shoulder, smiled at him, and he said that the four of them wanted to help him rebuild his legs. Together. Anakin smiled, as if he couldn't believe that someone cared about his interests. Palpatine didn't care that he liked building things, it was one of the few things that kept him sane as Anakin, as a slave on Tatooine, and as a slave on the Jedi Temple. Building was his safe place, and now he had people that he wanted to rejoice in his favorite hobby with him. He felt surrounded by love as Han and Chewie brought over some supplies. Anakin moved himself down to the floor where Luke and Leia sat themselves down next to him. Anakin couldn't focus on the moment as he smiled. Everything passed by in slow motion. The smiling faces of his children, even the Wookiee and the smuggler. They were all happy to be here with him. He couldn't make sense of everything. It was so incredible to him. In Anakin's mind though, more important than his legs was seeing the smile on Han's face when he looked at Anakin's daughter. Even more so was the glimmer in her teeth as she looked at him with dirty hands as they began wiping their hands off on one another's faces and laughing. Luke was next to his father, tightening his leg as he looked up, asking him if it was good enough, only to see Anakin smiling, like he had only for the first time in his life experienced happiness. After hours of continuous joy, Anakin looked at everyone. A little bit of nervousness in his eyes. He hadn't built something since he was last Anakin. This was the first time he used his hands to create something in decades. He smiled nervously. As he lifted one leg up and applied pressure, as he pulled himself off off the ground. Losing a little bit of balance, the Wookiee caught a hold of his arm and looked at him as he smiled, thanking Chewie for catching him. Anakin steadied himself as he stood upright. He was the same height as he was when he was Anakin. Luke and Leia were both shorter than him, and he couldn't understand how. It was kind of funny, he was so tall and they weren't. It made him chuckle. But then he took a deep breath as Chewie released him, and he stood on his own for the first time as Anakin Skywalker. Anakin was so happy, and as were Luke, Leia, Han, and yes, Chewie too. But one more surprise wasn't enough for Anakin, as a blue and white little Ashmech rolled into the room whistling away. R2-D2 recognized Anakin by the black robes, and that smile that could be seen from miles away. R2-D2 whistled and spun around in circles as he rode over to Anakin. Anakin smiled as Han and Chewie parted away so Anakin could see his droid. Anakin took one step forward, a little uneasy, but the next one with a building confidence. Anakin reached down and then he kneeled down as he put his hands around R2's head, who shook side to side with joy. For R2, it hadn't been since Mustafar. R2 was so happy to see Anakin, and the same feeling was mutual for Anakin. Anakin looked over his twins and asked if they were up for an adventure. Han chipped in and asked if he would like a ride in the ship that did the Kelso run in 12 parsecs. Anakin, who was on his knee, lifted himself up and stood over Han as he placed his hand on Han's shoulder and just smiled. Han was quick to tell Chewie to power up the Falcon. Chewie growled and then moved along as R2-D2 and Luke followed. Luke walked over, telling his father that he'd meet him in the ship. Han lifted up his arm and Leia placed hers in his as she locked arms with Han. Anakin smiled as he followed all four of them. Anakin would ask R2 about the last mission he took with Master Yoda. R2 remembered, but unsure of which location, Anakin asked if they could go to the one that was in a nebula. R2 beeped at Anakin as he plugged the location into the Falcon, and Han and Chewie prepared everything and everyone for the jump to lightspeed. In Lightspeed, Luke, Leia, Anakin, Han, and Chewie played a little bit of Sabacc. Han was really good at the game. After all, it's how he won the Millennium Falcon. When they got to the nebula, R2 guided Han and Chewie until his systems began to malfunction, and the ship did too. Han tried to pull, but Anakin told him to stop and watch. The ship would be guided by the Force, and it was. 
the Millennium Falcon found itself to the surface of the lush planet. Luke and Leia were the first to exit the Falcon. Anakin told Han and Chewie that they were here to begin their journey within the Force. In some way, shape, or form, it began here, and they were here to find out what it was. Luke and Leia ran out to the grass of the planet as Anakin followed out with R2-D2 behind him, like old times. Anakin couldn't believe that after all the times he chased the Millennium Falcon, he was inside of it with Han and Chewie. It was absolutely bizarre. As Anakin walked down the ramp of the Millennium Falcon, he looked around and then down. He was wearing a black robe. He had his hands again with human flesh. He looked out and saw canyons afar and trees of life. It was so peaceful here. He then heard two voices and turned around and saw two young adults. He recognized Luke and then he saw Leia, that was his twin sister. He then raised his hands to his face and he felt skin. It was incredible. Anakin's face was revealed. He saw some water and walked over to peer into his own reflection. He smiled and saw his lips, teeth, his eyes the color of the sky that lay behind him, and he saw hair. He raised his hand and felt curls crawling down his head. And then, as if it couldn't be more perfectly timed, the wind blew through his hair and softly hugged his face. Anakin was in a surreal place. Even more, the force was extraordinarily powerful here. Anakin feels the living force and he breathes it all in. He couldn't believe it. How couldn't he have noticed? He was breathing in with his own nose and mouth, without a respirator. Anakin was in heaven when he felt the presence and then all of a sudden he saw five dressed floating figures with masks. He was interested if anyone else saw them. Luke and Leia ran up behind him and they looked at them from behind their father, who was equally as curious to see what these beings were. They looked down at Anakin and then one of the front spoke, welcoming them and then introducing themselves as shamans, in other words, the ancient order of the wills. They were beings of the living force themselves. They had guided Master Yoda before, but his failure to maintain balance was a misstep on their part. They told the three to follow them, and so they did. R2 waited behind as Han and Chewie walked out and watched the three Skywalkers follow the floating people. Han didn't want to know. None of it was his business, and so he turned around and walked back inside of the Falcon. The Wills explained that the dark side was like a sickness. It upset the balance, and while too much of anything was bad, the dark side itself was bad. They continued telling about the mysteries of the Force, telling the Skywalkers that their place in the galaxy was to restore the balance, and while Anakin had brought balance to the Force, this needed to be the fate that generations kept going. The Force needed to heal, and it would heal if balance was kept in the galaxy. Evil can rise, people can fall, systems can die, but the Force itself should never be out of balance. The dark side encourages the death of the Force, the light looks to outshine the Force. The Skywalkers understood that balance brings peace to the Force. Too much light and too much dark could tear it apart. The Wills continued. The Barando Sages keep balance. The Dathomir Witches keep balance. The Jedi had balance and their code tried to outshine it. The Sith had no balance and they sought to disrupt it. The Skywalkers were being taught that balance in the Force is balance in the galaxy. Events happen, times change, people suffer, but people rally. Though one thing cannot happen, the force cannot fall out of balance because, if it does, it encourages the fall of balance in the galaxy itself. It allows evil to uprise and take over without mercy or merit. The wills slowly drop their outfits and their masks as they vanish into the force. Anakin looked at the fallen robes and then turned around to his children. They finally understood what he had been talking about this entire time. He understood it, and now he had to complete it. Leia would go with Han, and they would begin their life together, enjoying the balance and bringing forth one child named Ben Solo. Old Ben who saved her and her father, and even more, her adopted father at one point. Luke himself would find a lovely woman, a woman who used to be an agent of evil, but found herself clutching the balance that Luke drove into the heart of the galaxy. Mara Jade was her name, and she empowered Luke. And while seeing that his children got to experience something he never did, Anakin rejoiced in their happiness, rather than dwell in his abandonment. Though Luke and Mar were always out and around, they were looking to begin their new order, the Order of Skywalker. It was like the Jedi, but instead of the Jedi Code, and old books that held no real concept of the reality of their time, the Order of Skywalker was entirely focused on balance. 
Luke's first students would remind him of his teacher, Master Yoda. Grogu would become the first student of this academy, and while his attachment to a Mandalorian kept his mind focused elsewhere, Luke, Mara, and Anakin showed the young force wielder that attachments give one balance, and allow them to rejoice in the things that the Jedi forbade themselves from. The Order of Skywalker would also in this time add a member of the Keldor species, reminding Anakin of the ever so gentle Plo Koon. While the Order of Skywalker functioned like the Witches of Dathomir and the Baron Dos Sages, they were seen as a real replacement to the Jedi throughout the galaxy. Many people who couldn't differentiate the two of them would just call them Jedi. It was acceptable, they were very similar in many aspects, and while the Force was returned to balance, much like the Will said, there would be evil. And while that evil didn't disrupt the Force itself, it did disrupt the New Republic, which now had a new foe to face down, the brilliant Admiral of the former Empire, Grand Admiral Thrawn. While there were no Sith to speak of, the Order of Skywalker kept their noses out of conflict. Every conflict would resolve itself. The Order of Skywalker instead focused on relief for individuals. Anakin would teach students, one of which becoming his grandson, Ben. The Order of Skywalker still used lightsabers as a form of tradition, while they normally didn't have to use them. The Order would grow exceptionally fast, especially because of Mara, Jade, and Luke Skywalker. The two of them worked so well together, and there was really nothing that could corrode their influence. Anakin, being the Grand Master in the Order of Skywalker, found balance within himself. And as the years began to speed by for the aging Skywalker, he found peace in the Force surrounding him. Though, his peace would be disrupted. It wasn't something around him, rather, the disturbance within the Force. The dark side was at work again. And he was going to keep the balance. While it was hard to corrupt the young of the Order of Skywalker, it wasn't a younger person who disrupted this balance within the Force. It was an ancient power in the dark side reawakening after being dormant for so long. The former mother of the Ones was returning from her dormant state. After the Ones died in 21 BBY, her prison was opened, but only now did Abeloth realize that she was free to torment the galaxy itself. Anakin knew it was time to restore the balance indefinitely. When Luke and Mara returned, he told them that now would be the time to restore the balance. Both Mara and Luke, being young and eager, were ready for action, but Anakin told them that it was time for the balance to be restored to the galaxy forever. There was no other way for this to be achieved unless he trapped her on Mortis so that she couldn't escape. Luke and Mara thought Anakin was doing this alone because he couldn't, and he didn't want anyone else to get hurt. But when Anakin took his ship across the galaxy to face Abeloth, it became apparent that he wasn't just banishing her to Mortis. He was trapping himself in the home of the Ones forever with her. Though unlike his first time visiting the Force powerful world, Anakin made the choice he should have taken when the father was first there. Anakin cemented himself as a piece of Mortis, trapping the one known as Abeloth and changing her back into the mother. While Anakin's selfless sacrifice left him immortal to watch over the galaxy forever, he also did have one final lesson for Abeloth herself. Anakin was able to turn her back into the mother. And while this granted her the same immortality, the soul of Abeloth was actually the soul of Padme, trapped by the Force, when Palpatine placed it there, ensuring that Vader as the Dark Lord of the Sith could never get to it. Anakin's story would have a happy ending, because when he released the mother from Abeloth, turning her back, he found that it wasn't the mother, but Padme Amidala herself, her soul trapped inside of another. But this would be alright for her. She had nothing to worry about here. Anakin and Padme took their place as the new ones in the galaxy. The ultimate sacrifice for immortality, but that immortality came with a responsibility to the Force. While Anakin and Padme would be able to watch over their son and daughter, then their grandchildren, and then for more generations, as the Skywalker bloodline continued throughout history. Though, through the changing times, as the galaxy, far, far away, continued to change within the grasp of the Force. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is our story. Again, special thanks to Benjamin Wells, Jay Hoffman, and WarPigman308 for supporting the channel. Let's hit 2,000 likes on this so we can see What If Mace Windu trained Galen Merrick. If you want to see a What If, let me know down below. I do read off your comments. Again, I don't do crossovers. Check out the Twitch, community, Discord, and Patreon if you want to be a part of our community or support me in other ways. And if you want to win a lightsaber, go down below. There's a doc list at its pinned to the top of the comment section, go to the doc, comment your name, and you could have a chance of winning a lightsaber on July 4th, 2022, it's about a month away, stay tuned for that. 
Anyways, let's talk about this story. Wow. Um, okay, I didn't expect any of this to happen. I really didn't. Um, you know, I was I was expecting to do something with the... I, I don't know. I was going to do something with... <laughs> with... <laughs> with... I the the characters um from the sequels i i was like okay you know i might do that but it went in a completely different direction and i'm so happy it did this story is one of the most unique stories i've ever told and i'm so happy about that because i haven't slept all night so this is like incredible i'm i'm really thrilled with this um it's it's really out there it's really different and i think i think it's honestly the perfect ending for anakin i really do he, he gets to restore balance of the Force by just being him and being the, the new ones. And essentially, I guess I guess I was just mirroring what happened to the ones. He's, he becomes the one. He becomes essentially the father, and Padme is the mother. And and while however you believe Padme died, I switch it up between what-ifs and what-nots that I do, but uh, for the circumstance of this one, I'm going to say that Palpatine took Padme's life to restore both Vader's life, but also put it away so that she would die physically but she would still be alive in the force she would still be alive out there but she would be trapped within abeloth because palpatine would know that abeloth was alive or whatnot but i don't know i thought it'd be really interesting to bring in the ones and the wills and from there it just went into a really interesting path i never really went down the path of actually using the wills or any of that stuff and the shamans and I, I thought it was really interesting and i I really focus on a lot of the emotion of of Anakin's turn. I think Anakin's turn to being Anakin again was would be really emotional. And I think I think I think sometimes we get caught up in the action. We get caught up in the action of everything around us, and we don't get to sit back and enjoy the moments uh, that we sometimes in our own lives get to overlook because we're living them. Uh, but I think I think slowing them down for Anakin, letting him really rejoice in the moments that he's living in would allow for such a unique experience that I don't think we've really ever seen from Star Wars before and from other what ifs that I know of. And I, I again I wasn't intending on it, but honestly I I'm this is to me one of the most beautiful stories I've ever told. I was I was writing I'll be completely honest with you guys, I was writing this scene um where where Vader is or, or Anakin and Luke and Leia are are putting back his or putting his armor or fixing his legs up and I just like started crying. Like I was like, this is this is something else. So I don't know. I could be influenced from the no sleep. I could be losing my mind, but um, I'm I'm very content with how this turned out. This was a very very unique ending, and I don't think anyone saw this coming. <laughs> but it's it's kind of boring going with the dark side, the the light side. I I wanted the wills to have this 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 really weird perception of the force and have the force be balanced, but the Jedi not exist and the Sith not exist. I didn't want the Sith to exist. I don't want I don't want Snoke coming back. I don't want Palpatine coming back. That, that no, that doesn't matter. I don't want the Jedi coming back either. I want the Order of Skywalker. And the Order of Skywalker is set to keeping balance in the Force. Because in this story, I want the Force to represent the Force, not the galaxy. People are gonna war. People always fight. The cosmic balance of the Force is upset by the wielders of it. If the wielders of the Force are all Sith, then the Force is gonna die. If the wielders of the Force are all light side to the dogmatic code of the Jedi, then the Force is going to die. But if the Force is controlled by those who are balanced within it, those who are like the Baron Dosages or like the Witches of Dathomir, I believe that the Force itself would thrive. Because the Force thrives on balance. And without that balance, the Force doesn't thrive. And I wanted to disassociate the Force from what happens in the galaxy. I don't want to talk about Thrawn. I don't care about Thrawn. I don't care about Thrawn coming into the story at all. I, you know, who cares? That doesn't matter. This is a story of Anakin Skywalker. This this is staying true to the heart of the Skywalker saga. And I give that to you. And I'm content with this. Uh, <laughs> I might be rambling a little bit here, but I started writing and much like everything, it just kept on going. And I'm very, very pleased with how it turned out. I have to say, I'm very pleased with it. So I hope you liked it. Subscribe, share. We're going for 50,000 subscribers. So hit that subscribe button. Anyways, guys, I love you all. Spread the love. And I will see you guys in the next video. Always remember, my friends, may the Force be with you.